Hello everyone. So in the last video on the series on how an engine works, I split the crankcase of the engine in two uh, to reveal the transmission and the crankshaft assembly. So I just want to talk about the inside of the crankshaft of the engine just briefly just to finish off this video series first of all when you look into the crankshaft it looks like a complicated mess of gears and metal and rods and pistons um, and holes and bolt holes and more holes so it really does look quite confusing with everything that's going on in the crankshaft or in the crankcase but it's actually very simple it's actually really only two components in the crankcase of this particular engine obviously it could be a little bit more complicated as you go into bigger engines and bigger engine sizes and more sophisticated engines but on this one you can kind of break it up into two parts there's really only the gearbox or the transmission, which is all these this section here. It's the second or the this is the rear of the motorcycle engine. So in the rear of the engine, it's just the transmission and the, or the gearbox, as it's otherwise known. So all these gears, shafts, they're all to do with the transmission. And then this shaft here is the crankshaft. Uh, and that is the second component you could really look at, or the crankshaft assembly. So the crankshaft assembly is what's connected to the piston. So the power is supplied to the engine through the piston. So the motion of the piston is essentially driving the crankshaft, as you can see. So the crankshaft is rotating and then the crankshaft is acting on the input shaft normally and that causes the input shaft to rotate as well and then the input shaft is acting on the output shaft. So the input sh or the crankshaft consists of essentially just the shaft itself. It's got this little gear here and this gear is meshed up with a, another gear. So I'll just move in the other half of the crankcase. So it's essentially meshed up with this gear here. So this gear fits in here and it acts on this little gear here. And on the end of this gear, there is a cam. Now this is not common in too many engines really, but this little cam uh, acts on the push rods which then act on the valves and essentially this gear is, is really involved in, in ensuring that the timing of the opening and closing of the valves uh, corresponds with the motion of the piston in the cylinder. So we also have on the cr crankshaft there is this what we call the main bearing so we actually have two main bearings and this bearing normally it sits in the other half of the crankcase so it normally just sits in here and essentially the crankshaft rotates on this main bearing or on the two main bearings the first, this being the first main bearing and then we have another main bearing which is here so you can see the second main bearing just here in the other crankcase half. So there are the two main bearings that the crankshaft rotates on. Now also connected to the crankshaft we have the, the connecting rod which connects the piston to the crankshaft. Now this is the big end of the connecting rod and if we just rotate it slightly here you can possibly see it a little bit easier 
but here's the big end of the connecting rod and it is connected to this it sits between the web of the or the crankshaft web on either side and it actually rotates inside the big end of the connecting rod there is what is called the big end bearing okay now if anything goes wrong with that bearing um, then the crankshaft assembly is generally replaced as a whole So that's the crankshaft assembly and um, there is these big large lumps of metal that's really all they are they're essentially counterweights what you'll notice is that they're not they're not perfectly symmetrical uh, you can probably see here there is on this side and here it is a little bit thinner so it's moving just here it's a little bit thinner than on this side here And that's essentially just for weight distribution and probably to uh, eliminate vibration in the engine when the piston is going up and down and it might aid momentum as well. So that's the crankshaft assembly. And let's look briefly at the gearbox. <clears throat> I will go into more detail in a separate video on how this gearbox works but essentially the main components of the gearbox are we have the shift drum which is this bit here so the shift drum actually can rotate so I can briefly rotate it here so you can see that it just rotates and it has little grooves in it and these little grooves are what the shift forks move along so as we as we, as we rotate the drum using the gear change mechanism the little uh, shift forks which are these things here so they're on this little shaft here this holds the shift forks so I can just show you them a little bit better here so we can see these shift forks so we have one shift fork here, we have a shift fork there, so I'm just moving it. So there's one shift fork, okay, here's a second one, so it's a little bit of a shiny, shinier piece of metal and then we have a third one here. So we have two shift forks acting on the gears or the dogs on the output shaft which is this shaft here. So we have the output shaft and then we have the input shaft. So the input shaft, um, the end of the input shaft goes through the crank case here. So here's the end of the other end of the input shaft. And the input shaft normally houses the clutch and it is acted on by the, the crankshaft. So the piston going up and down in the engine acts on the crankshaft, causes it to rotate. It Now I have removed the gears, but there is intermediate gears between the crankshaft and the input shaft. So the crankshaft acts on the input shaft through the clutch. And then the input shaft acts on the output shaft through these gears. So this is our input shaft, this is our output shaft, and then we have a number of pinion gears, which are just these little, that look like gears. And then we also have on both the input shaft and the output shaft, we have little dogs. So the dogs um, are what, what move back and forth. Also some of the pinion gears do, so this pinion gear here is connected to a dog and it actually moves back and forth. We have some intermediate gears here as well which are on separate shafts. So we have an intermediate shaft here and then we have another one here. So we have two intermediate shafts, we have our output shaft, our input shaft and then we have our shift drum and our forks which are on 
a little shaft here. So again, I'll do a separate video to explain that in more detail, but essentially when the gears are engaged, as, it, as is the case with these two dogs here, so we have two dogs engaged here for fifth gear, and when I rotate the input shaft, you can see that they're acting on the output shaft, and the output shaft is rotating. Now on the end of the output shaft will be your front sprocket, which will have the chain on it, which is connected to the, the, rear, the rear sprocket, which is connected to the back wheel. So the power, when the engine is running, the power from the engine is output through this output shaft and through the front sprocket to drive the rear wheel of your motorcycle and that's how the motorcycle runs. So that's it, that's the, um, that's the, the, really the last video in the series on how a motorcycle engine works. Again, the gearbox is quite complicated, so that's why I've done a separate video on that, so I can go into it in more detail. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this series, and hopefully you now understand how a motorcycle engine works. If you like the videos, if you found it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I appreciate if every if you've if you've got through all the videos in the series, um, then that's I really appreciate that. So thank you very much. So see you later, guys. Bye now.